Let's begin these demos by taking a look at hijacking cookies with cross-site scripting. And arguably, this is one of the most prominent session hijacking attacks. Because as you'll see in a moment, it is exceptionally easy. So here's what we're going to do. I'm on the website, the local version of my website, and I'm presently logged in. We can see Hello Troy there up in the navigation. I'm going to hit F12 to bring up the dev tools and we'll jump over to our resources, cookies, and then into our set of cookies. Now we can see here that I have a session ID. It's 1004756. So I'm presently logged in and the cookie is set on my machine. Now what we're going to see here is a reflected cross-site scripting attack. So let me show you the execution of the attack and then I'll talk through how it actually works. Now what normally happens with the reflected XSS attack is a malicious link is socialized by the attacker. Now it just so happens that I've got a tweet over here on another tab and this tweet does look kind of intriguing. Troy is saying, oh nice, check this out. It must be something interesting. Now the link looks okay. It's to a site that I know and trust local.hackyourselffirst.troyhunt.com Yes, there is something off the end of this link, but all we can see is the three little ellipses there. So we really can't see what the actual URL is. Let's click on it and see what happens. And here we go. It looks like just a search page. Uh, in fact, the search page is saying nothing interesting to see here at all. However, the attacker has just stolen my session ID. How did this happen? Well, there's a little bit of an indicator on the screen here that I've deliberately left just to try and illustrate the mechanism. So you'll see towards the left-hand side, there's a broken image. Let's do this. I'm going to right-click on that image, and I'm going to inspect the element. What we will now see is that the image source is attacker.com, and then a query string of cookies equals, and then session ID equals, and there's my session ID. 104756, that is the session ID that we just saw in the other tab. Now let me first show you how the attacker can use that session ID to hijack the session, and then we'll come back and we'll look at the mechanics of how that XSS attack actually worked. So what I'm going to do is just double click on that link, and I'm going to copy out the name and the value of the cookie. Let's go and put that on the clipboard. I'm now going to go and bring a Firefox session over onto this screen. And the reason I want to bring Firefox over is because I want to show you a totally separate browser, not authenticated to the site, and what we can then do with this cookie. So here's Firefox. Let's now go to the website. Now because I've gone to the site in a brand new browser, I should have a brand new session. So let's hit F12 for the developer tools. And I have the Storage Inspector enabled in Firefox, so we can jump over to Storage. And we'll see here that we've got cookies already selected. And in fact, we can see that there is a session ID here with a value ending in 57. So remember Chrome was ending in 56. It has its own cookie ID. Now because this is a brand new session and I haven't been to the site in Firefox before, we can also see the login link in the navigation bar. So I'm presently logged out. Now let's do this. I'm going to jump over to the console, and then in the console, I'm going to write document.cookie equals, and then in quotes, I'm going to paste in the cookie that I copied from Chrome. Let's now run that. And that has now run, and we've now set a cookie to the session ID ending in 56. Let's now follow a link so that that cookie gets sent back to the website. We'll go to the leaderboard. And now we can see Hello Troy in the navigation bar. So the attacker is now logged in as me. Now what that means is that the attacker can now do whatever they like under my identity. So that's it. It really is that simple. Once the attacker has the session ID, they can impersonate the victim. And it's as simple as just recreating that cookie in their browser. Now you might be wondering, how was this actually possible? By now it should be clear what the actual session ID cookie is, 
But how did the attacker get it? Let's jump back to Chrome and take a look at the URL that I had posted to Twitter. So here's what happened. When we look at the search term in the address bar, we can see that the value of that search term actually has quite a bit of content in it. Now let me show you what's actually going on with this URL. I'm going to jump over into a notepad window and I'm going to paste the entire URL just here. What you're seeing here is a very basic reflected cross-site scripting attack. I'm only going to talk about it briefly here and if you want to get into detail in cross-site scripting, go and check out my Hack Yourself First course, How to Go on the Cyber Offense. I will, however, point out the important bits here. I'm using JavaScript to declare an image, and then I'm setting the source of that image to attacker.com, passing a query string with a name, that is cookies, and a value that is document.cookie. So what's actually happening here is when this script runs in the browser, it's getting the cookie and it's appending that to the attacker.com URL and it's setting that as the source of the image. So you can see here where the image actually gets appended to the document body. And then that's why we saw the broken image in the browser. Because there is no image at attacker.com, but that doesn't matter because my cookies have still been sent off to there in a request. The last little bit of jQuery script here is just simply to make sure that that H2 heading has this little bit of text, which there's nothing interesting to see here at all. If I didn't do that, we'd actually see the search term, which looks a little bit suspicious. Now, the reason why this works is evident once you view the source code of the page. So control U to jump into the source. I'll just jump straight down to the end and we can see that the entire attack payload actually appears here. So that is everything that was in the URL. And really what we're looking at here is a classic reflected cross-site scripting attack. And in fact, it's this very vulnerability that I do demonstrate and explain in detail in my Hack Yourself First course. The important thing here is that this has made for a really, really easy session hijacking attack. Let's go and take a look at how this really worked by way of a basic diagram. Let's break this attack down in a nice simple visual way. So we had an attacker and the attacker shared a malicious URL with an XSS payload. So that's what I did via Twitter. That was my tweet that had the malicious query string in it. Now the user, the victim, was already authenticated and they followed that link with the XSS payload. Now when the application received that request, it reflected the malicious payload. So it wrote it to the page, it embedded it in the page. And of course what was embedded was a request to the attacker with the cookies. So that code loaded up in the user's browser. And of course it's the user's browser that has the session ID cookie. So that consequently caused the browser to make a request to the attacker with the session ID. And that was all it was. It was a very, very rudimentary cross-site scripting attack. But that's all it took to get the session ID. Now this is reflected XSS. It could also have been persistent XSS. So that is cross-site scripting which is actually stored in the database such that everybody sees it when they come to the site. It doesn't have to be reflected by malicious URL. We wouldn't have had to use Twitter or email or any other channel to socialize the link because the attack is persistent in the database. So again, that's a style of attack that I go into in detail in the Hack Yourself First course. Suffice to say that once an attacker can start to run arbitrary script in the victim's browser, they then have the opportunity to hijack session cookies. Now there are defenses against this, multiple defenses, and I'll talk about those later on in the course. For now though, this is a great demonstration of just how easy session hijacking can be.